first puzzle in a Sudoku competition is usually the easiest. This one's harder than you think. I'll show you what surprising strategy you need to solve the green cell and the rest of this classic Sudoku. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. See what you can determine about each digit so we can gather some information about this puzzle. You see these two ones? Well, have two places for a one in block six. This is called Snyder Notation. Anytime in a three by three block, two possibilities for a candidate, you can mark it. In case we solve one of these cells, we can solve the other right away. So the green cell might be a one. Let's see what more information we can find. The twos, cut right across row nine here. So there's two possibilities for two in block eight. So I'll put Snyder twos there. And greetings, friend. If you're new to this channel, I welcome you to Smart Hobbies. Subscribe, tap the bell for notifications if you want to turn your passing interest in Sudoku into a fun and enjoyable hobby. Today, I'm showing you round three, puzzle one from Sudoku Grand Prix. I've done dozens of puzzle ones. You normally only need naked, hidden singles, a little bit of cross hatching to solve them. This puzzle requires more than that. Look at the threes. You got two threes right here, so we can actually solve for three now in block eight, which displaces that Snyder two. Whenever you displace a Snyder mark, you can solve the other cell right away. And with this three and this three, you can put Snyder threes in block five. And now I'm gonna show you a nice little shortcut. This might be a little trickier to spot. Where can a three go here across row three? Can't be here because of this three, it can't be here because of this three and because of these two threes it can't be there. So we can actually solve this cell for a three. Let's look at the fives now. You got these two fives, only one place for a five in block eight. So we're actually filling up block eight nice. And so I'm gonna put a naked pair here, a one four, to show that those are the only two candidates that can go in those two cells. And then look at the sixes, you have this six here, and this six, and the six across row seven, so we can solve for six in block nine. And then with these two sixes, we can put Snyder sixes here in block five. Uh, the sevens, you'll see I have a seven coming down column one, Snyder sevens in block four. And then in block five, with these two sevens, you have Snyder sevens in block five. And this is very interesting, uh, this is going to save you a lot of time if you notice this. Notice how the sevens are limited to rows four and six here in block four. And they're also limited to rows four and six here in block five. What that means is a seven has to be somewhere in row five. Can't be in row five here in block four or block five. The seven's got to be in one of these two spots here in block six. This is called a claiming pair, and this is huge. You've got to spot this. You want to have help finding this green cell. Because what can the green cell be right now? It could be a one, could be a three, could have been a seven or a nine, right? Because you got two, four, five, six, and an eight all looking at it. But now we know that it can't be a seven because of the claiming pair of sevens. So we've eliminated one digit. And now we only have three more to choose from. I cover claiming pairs along with the other top Sudoku strategies in my Sudoku solving guide. And what this means to you is you can become an expert on over 80% of all the Sudokus you will ever see. Click on the pinned comment to get it for free and start sharpening your mind now. You want a sharper mind, right? All right, let's sharpen that mind and look at the eights. I'm going to show you a really neat, cool combination here. You notice that the eight comes down, column seven also across row eight. So we have Snyder eights here in block nine. And since they're in the same row, this is actually also a pointing pair. And what that means is since the eights have to be in block nine somewhere and they're restricted to row seven, eight cannot be anywhere else along row seven. So you cannot have an eight here anymore or here. You couldn't have one already because of that eight. So now the eights are limited to these two spots in block seven, right? Because you got this eight, this eight and the pointing pair of eights. And let's look at the nines. With these two nines and this nine, you may have noticed you could solve a nine right there. And then with these two nines, you have Snyder nines in block one. But 
Did you notice that you have an 8, 9 here in column 7 and an 8, 9 here in row 8? So the 9s are limited to the same two cells in block 9. Whenever you see Snyder on top of each other, like I call this, that means you found a hidden pair. And what it means is the 8 and 9 have to be somewhere in block 9. They're limited to the same two cells. That's the only two possibilities for those two cells. So you can mark this as an 8, 9, and nothing else can go in there. And so now with this 8, 9 here and this 8, 9 here, the 9s are going to be restricted to the same two cells in block 7 as the 8. So you found another hidden pair. And what this does for us, since 8, 9 are in these two cells, 1, 4 is in these two cells, and you have the 2, 3, 5, and 6, we can actually solve this cell now for a 7. If you like these tips, consider buying me a coffee or click on the super thanks here in YouTube. I'd really appreciate it. And now with this 1 and this hidden pair, we can actually solve for 1 in block 9, which is going to allow us to displace the 1 in block 6, solve this cell for 7, a 1 and remove the 1 from there. So now we're just down to a 3 or a 9. And we got to do a little bit more work before we can figure out whether this is a 3 or a 9. Look in column 7 here. Since you have the 8, 9 here, this is now a 4, 5 naked pair, the only two digits remaining, which restricts these two cells to just a 2 or 3 to finish out column 7. I do like to put naked pairs in when I'm solving these puzzles because they because those two cells, now I don't have to worry about anything else going in there, and it helps me with the solving. After doing the 2, 3, now we can look at the fact that with this 2 and this 2, there's only two places for a 2 in block 6. And so these 2s are now a pointing pair. 2s can't be here. You have this 2 covering these cells. So these cells, one of those has to contain a two and now you want to look across row seven all right we got this eight nine there we have these three cells which you may notice is you have a one and two right here covers those cells and you got the one two right there so the one and two are limited to the same two cells here in block seven so this is another hidden pair of the one two and since you have the eight nine there the only thing this could be now is a four or a five you do want to find that one two hidden pair and then add that four or five naked pair. And then now with the seven here, we have Snyder sevens in block seven. We've got a couple of interesting ways to proceed here. And I want to point something out to you. You might see that, hey, I have an eight, nine naked pair or eight, nine, two digits right there of this eight, nine naked pair. If you come up column one, you might see a quite a bit of restriction here in this cell, right? Because you got a one, two, three, four, you have the 5 and the 6 in the row, and you have a 7 right there. So this is also an 8, 9. This is a naked pair 8, 9. Tough to see because it's outside. It's in two different blocks. So this 8, 9 is in this block 7, and this one's in block 4. But it's going to be huge. It's going to help us solve our green cell. Look at column 4 now. It is of interest to you whenever you have at least five digits filled out to kind of see if you can do more solving in a column. So since we have a two, five, six, seven, nine, we just need a one, three, four, or an eight. If you look at this cell, row five, column four, you might notice you have a one, three, and an eight right here. So it leaves only one possibility remaining. This is a naked single four. When you get really good at finding naked singles, it'll reduce your solve time quite a bit and so with this four now we can disambiguate the one four down there and you see there's still quite a bit of restriction up here what can be in this cell right can't be a one two three or a four can't be an eight or nine can't be a five or seven this has to be a naked single six and this is going to help us now with block four and actually going to help us with the green cell let's go back to this eight nine naked pair you might notice that we have this one two three four right here and now you have the seven and the eight nine naked pair in column one and so this can't be a one two three four and it can't be a seven eight or nine and now with this six it can't be a six either you can solve this cell for a five 
and now you have a one, two, three, four, five, seven, and the eight, nine naked pair, this cell can only be a six. Give me a thumbs up if you saw how to solve this five and six in column one. Okay, now we're gonna use that to do some more solving here because you'll notice now we have a three, five, six, seven, eight, nine in column one. We just need a one, two, or a four. And since you have the one, two here in block seven, a one, two can't be in this cell. And you have the three, five, six, seven, eight, nine coming down the column. This can only be a naked single four. Okay, and now with this one, two, the only thing left in column one is a, another one, two. I'll remove the orange marks right there, and it's time to solve our green cell. We've put enough restriction in this puzzle, we can solve this cell. And there's a couple ways to look at it. The way I saw it is if you look across row five, you have a one, two, three, four, five, six, and an eight. That leaves us with just a seven, nine naked pair. A naked pair also acts as a claiming pair. And what it means is that the seven, nine are restricted to these two cells in block six. So a seven, nine cannot be anywhere else in block six. This cell could no longer contain a nine. You put a nine right here, no place to put a nine in row five. Okay, so you can remove the nine from there. The other way to see this if you could have noticed, you have a nine cutting across row four, which puts two nines right there that act as a pointing pair. And since they have a pointing pair of nines, you could also remove the nine from that spot. But drop in the comments whether you saw this as a claiming pair or a pointing pair. I would love to hear from you. I answer every comment. After we solve this for a three, we can now do what I call following the Snyder. What did this give us? Can we clean up some of these marks so we find our next strategy we need to use. And yes, with this three, we know this has to be a two now, and that's got to be a three. And get rid of that two in block six. And then following the three here, we can displace the Snyder three here, solve this cell for a three. And then with these two threes and this three, you can solve for a three in block two. You have now a full house in column four. The only thing we're missing is an eight. So I can solve the eight there. And with these two eights, pushes an eight here in block three, disambiguating the nine, eight here in block nine. And with this nine, now we're gonna disambiguate that seven, nine right there, which gives us a four, five naked pair in block six. And then now in column five, uh, this is really cool. We're gonna be able to solve these cells and it's gonna to lead to what I call my right angle trick. We need a one or a two. Well, we have a one right there, so this has gotta be your two. And now, knowing that this is a two, we're gonna be able to solve the one and two here in block seven. Doesn't seem like it's connected, but it is. So this one, this has to be a two, makes this a one, right angle, that's a two, that's a one, and that's a two. That's my right angle brick. And now we can use that to solve more twos because of this two here and this two, we can solve for a two in block three, and with these twos, we can solve for two here in block two. And now look across row three. We only have two digits left, a four and a nine. I'm going to pull the four from block four. That has to be a four displacing that Snyder nine. And now we can disambiguate the eight nine here. Always clean up the marks when you get the opportunity. It allows us to solve an eight here. And the eight now needs to go somewhere here in block five. It can only go right here, displacing that Snyder seven, which allows us you solve for the seven here in block four. Remember those sevens and that claiming pair helped us out early in the beginning, displacing this Snyder nine. Okay, and now we can look and go, hey, I got a four right here. This has to be a five. That's a four and that's a five. We need a six or a seven. I got my seven there. So here's your seven, displacing that, and we go to a six. With these two six, we can solve for six in block one. I don't see a six in block two. So it has to be right there, leaving us with a naked single four. Okay, with these two fours, we gotta figure out which one of those cells contains a four. Why don't we go over here, and I don't see a one, so I got my one in a row one, so that's gotta be your one, and this is gonna be your five, which allows us to solve the five there, 
disambiguating the four or five in block six. Now we can come up and go, okay, the four's got to be here, and our last digit is a seven. See if you can spot the Sudoku pairs in this next video. Thank you so much for watching.